We're going to broadly classify bacteria as either being gram-positive, gram-negative, or something that does not gram-stain well. So something that's gram-positive turns up as purple because it actually binds the gram-stain, which is a purple-colored stain. And I just remember that with the P for positive, P and purple starts at the P. So a gram-positive bacteria stains purple, whereas a gram-negative bacteria stains red. So just remember, on the step one, you actually do get pictures. So if you get a picture of, you know, bacteria, let's say from sputum, and it's gram-stained and they're all purple bugs, then you know you're talking about gram-positive bugs. There are a couple of bacteria that are very important for the step one that actually have got a couple of exceptions. So the things that we just spoke about, these important characteristic structural features that are common to most bacteria, some bacteria do not have some parts of these or they have extra parts. So for example, mycoplasma, specifically we're going to be thinking about mycoplasma pneumonia or its distant related cousin urea plasma. These bugs actually have sterols in their cell membrane. And it's important to know that most bacteria do not have sterols like we do. And they also do not have a cell wall. So for this perspective, you know, it's really important to know in step one, you get a question about, let's say, a 24-year-old man with a persistent cough for the last couple of weeks. He still is going about his normal activities. He's going to work. You get a chest x-ray. You see sort of a patchy infiltrate. Now, this whole picture, you put it all together, and it's something that we describe as atypical pneumonia. Why is it atypical? Because he's not that sick. Because he's young and he's otherwise a healthy guy. His chest x-ray does not have a lobar consolidation. The patchy infiltrates is just sort of this diffuse thickening of the pulmonary parenchyma that doesn't really localize real infection. So this whole thing is very typical of a mycoplasma pneumonia infection. And the thing we have to know that since it doesn't have any cell wall, you can't use a cell wall inhibitor on it, which is why if any of you watching this video have ever had one of these kinds of infections, you would know then the treatment is azithromycin, which works at the level of the ribosome and not at the level of the cell wall. So it's a different way that you kill this bug. A couple other bugs that are important to know that have got some structural differences. Chlamydia does not have muramic acid, which is a part of the peptidoglycan cell wall. And mycobacteria contains mycolic acid. And that's very important because we have specific antibiotics that target the production of mycolic acid, for example, isoniazid or INH.